I've offered it at the silent auction rate, and it, and it truly is an experiment. So I thank you all for being here and being with me. And so just a little bit on my background. This is me as a kid. Yeah. As a child, I wasn't known for well-crafted drawings. I had reams of drawings of princesses with unnaturally large ball gowns. I had large family portraits where everyone had an egg head and stick arms. But I was this unique kid. I was the conductor of dog circuses, the architect of tree forts, and the pastry chef of mud pies. And so I just wanted to take you a little further along. In college, it was my boyfriend who was the real artist. He drew cartoons for the school newspaper, but I loved art and we took a drawing class together and it was a rainy Vermont afternoon and we were drawing a reclining male and I'm next to the real artist. And all of a sudden, the teacher comes around and he grabs my drawing and he marches it around the room. And I, I share this because when you talk to people, you really can change their lives. And the teacher walked the drawing around the room and he said, this is it. This is what I'm looking for. This is what it's all about. It was my first fan. So I ran back to the college dorm phone, which hung on the wall, because remember when phones used to hang on the wall. And I called my mother up and I said, I really want to be an art major. And she's like, whoa, it's a lot of money, UVM out of state. Why don't you try being an English major as well? And so I agreed to do both and began my study. I studied under an abstract painter from New York named Frank Hewitt. And for Frank, we never discussed content. And I want to bring that up today because there's a lot of content in these paintings. But my training was never about that. It was about color. It was about composition. It was about the quality of the paint strokes. It was just abstract joy. And that no working, just painting down in Taos. And it really was an adventure. And the daytimes were great. I'd be on a crest, I'd be on the Valdez Valley painting the fields. But at night times, I might be in an empty campground listening to rowdy parties and traffic going by. And I was a little just insecure. So like a typical adventurer, it had its high moments, but its low moments as well. Up in that is a, a newspaper clipping from the first uh, competition that I won in Jackson Hole. I had handed the, pa the painting in wet. And I was so excited to be accepted. And I went to this opening and, and then I won it. And I, I, I couldn't believe that I had handed in this wet painting. So again, the, like the teacher, these little moments give you encouragement to keep you going to the next phase. So in uh, 1995, I moved from Jackson down to Taos, and I had talked an open-minded landlord into turning my gallery into an art space. And again, kind of like the painting trips, a mixed bag. Days were just wonderful, you know, painting Seiko, organizing Seiko strolls. I had an artist collective for emerging artists. But at night, where was the next paycheck coming from? The next painting sale? And I simply talk about this because when you see creative souls, there's a lot of just um, insecurity that they're willing to live with for their lives. So it's, it's always that mixed bag. But for six years, I was down where Twining Weavers is now, next to Soul Food. And my neighbors were the Taos Cow, which we were so sad to see that they're in transition. And hopefully, we'll see them again soon. A couple life changes later, I went back to Maine to experience the birth of my niece, niece Maisie. And this new town was different. Brick buildings, porters, sailboats, seagulls a lot of cloudy weather but I, I really enjoyed New England and it widened my spectrum when I was painting in Taos before everything was orange and yellow 
And when I got to Maine, I really discovered purples and turquoises and the colors of the sea. And it really widened out my um, spectrum that I was painting from. My uncle Jimmy, who was also a New Englander, had traded in his house for a beautiful sailboat, which he marred in Booth Bay Harbor. I was no dummy. I was going sailing with Uncle Jimmy. <laughs> Fridays, I would get out of work and rush to the port, hop on the boat, and it was wonderful. Like many sailors, I had to be corrected because I nearly killed this boat as we narrowly escaped lobster pots all through Maine. But in the mornings, I would have coffee and I would sketch boats, and it was just a really sweet time with my family and, and learning about beautiful, beautiful engineering. I became interested in the mechanics of wind. When there is no wind, it's pretty simple. The mast is perpendicular as the sails load, the axis tips, and then where you get the story for the speed, because the painting isn't moving. You know, it's very hard to capture speed on a stationary object. The story has to do with the break of the axis and the tension in the lines, and it's, it's just been a real joy for me. Also in Maine, I spent time exploring my interests in the Japanese ink tradition and Japanese art. What I loved about ink, kind of like life, is that you can't totally control it. It's a marriage of the artist's intentions with the fluidity of the art. At that time, I read Memoirs of a Geisha. I don't know if you guys remember that book, but it left quite an impression on me. And I don't remember much about it today, but it had a fleeting sadness. And what I have here, that's actually a cherry blossom tree, if you can imagine that. And it was just spoke to a, a heart inside my heart. And this abstract work also has some of that Asian influence. Later, I moved back to Taos, probably in about 2004. I love my family, but the weather, the culture, it all called me back. And I, shortly after I returned, I was driving down some country road in a sliver of a party dress, much like tonight, bunch of canvases rattling in the back seat, and I was going to an art party in the country, and I thought I was home. It's glad to be back, yeah. So when I returned this time, I started working for two resort industries. One was Taos Ski Valley, and the other was Taos Country Club. And I have to say that I found these new offices inspirational. Pat and Taya, who are not here tonight, were skiers that introduced me to the game of golf about seven years ago. And I was just overwhelmed by the beauty of the course and the focus of the game. And you'll see some of those golf paintings and ski paintings around. And, you know, kind of back to like when I was that little kid, is that the paintings come when I'm truly engaged and I'm truly game. So when I'm on vacation or doing sports, that's where you're going to see this inspiration. The tropics. I love to go to the tropics. I'm going to try to go again this spring. This is on Maui in Hawaii. And the reason that I think it's important to keep traveling, even when you find your home in the land of enchantment, is that it recalibrates the spirit. And as an artist, you need to see with new eyes occasionally. You know, how many times can you paint the church? How many times the hollyhock? So I really see travel as part of my creative process. And this was in Yao State Park. And in the morning, you can look in the picture, and my easel's set up in the water. Like, my feet were in the water as I was beginning this painting. By noon, the place had filled with people. And I had come to the most popular vista on the island of Maui. And they were using my easel to balance as they walked across the stream. So, there we go. Oh, here we go. And a little bit more about the tropics. Even though a lot of my background is in New England, I am a Florida girl. 
and that's where I was born, and I have family that still lives in Florida. And I have a hot temperament. I mean, flip-flops, hot cars, insects, bikes. That temperament I still feel is to be seen in my paintings. My love of bright colors, the loose painting strokes. It's, it's my happy southern self. And so when you're seeing that joy, it's really from my very beginnings. One last place for juicing up is Northern California. And I go there when I can. And I call it big world-class fun. The, much like Hawaii, the skin stretches over the bones of the landscape. And it's a very feminine form out there. And it's just so beautiful. And granted, the palm trees are few. They're still there. But it is this chilly beauty that carved the, you know, the cut of the shore and the rocky coastline. So it was the coolness that gave you know, tribute to this, this landscape. And now I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for being part of this experiment. Um, I titled this talk, Rise, which is to, to meet a challenge. But I think what is really important as we're meeting challenges is to have a healthy dose of grace. And the, the dictionary defines, and this is kind of a mouthful, that grace is the sanctimonious state achieved through the assistance of the divine. And so what I'd like to say to you is, whatever the divine is, whether it's your family, whether it's a river, whether it's a sunset, I wish you grace in your daily travels. And may we all rise beyond who we are today not for the results, but for the thrill of rising. Thank you very much.